गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स यस्टरडेज क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट बेसिक्स ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर एंड ट्रांजिस्टर बींग यूज एज एन एम्पलीफायर वॉट आर नेसेसरी कंडीशन टू बी सेटिस्फाइड फॉर ट्रांजिस्टर टू बी यूज एज एन एम्पलीफायर इफ जस्ट टू रिकलेक्ट वट वी हैव यस्टरडे डिस्कस्ड इज this pn junction base to emitter pn junction should be forward biased and base to collector junction should be reverse biased as far as the operation of the transistor <coughs> uh, is concerned to be used as an amplifier those conditions to be satisfied though this pn junction is a reversed we find a controlled current in both collector terminal collector region as well as in emitter region controlled by the base current to write the expression we had this beta times ib and we have this 1 plus beta times ib this would happen uh, when the device is in active region <coughs> that is what we have discussed you may doubt though it is a reverse bias how the current can flow but that we have justified and we find the controlled behavior of the device uh, and device to be called it uh, acting working in a active region uh next to this what we discussed is about the dc load line and as far as dc load line is concerned or more than that it is about the characteristics output characteristics we have two parameters to define vce the voltage at collector with respect to emitter and we have a collector current so we have seen the graph for this sorry vce versus ic and we have gone for the two different observations or three different observation the observation is if both the pn junction base to collector and base to emitter if both the pn junctions are on or forward biased in that case we have seen that the current reaches to maximum and the voltage across the device is a zero we go to this point this is ic max point and this we call or identify uh this we identify as <coughs> the device is operating in a saturation region we have observed one more when both the pn junctions are reverse biased then we have the maximum possible voltage appearing across the device and the current becomes uh, zero and then the operating point is here and this point we call as a cut off point we make a line joining of this and this we call as a dc load line now <coughs> we have a control layer base current which is going to decide which particular operating point we can operate the device at so we can operate the device at this or at this depending upon the base current selection so base current curve is also important as far as the amplification action is concerned we select a base current such a way that it crosses the dc load line at the center and then we understand that the device is working in a active region uh, right next to this uh we have discussed about rc coupled amplifier and i understand today we have to continue on that so <coughs> yes <coughs> rc coupled amplifier register r1 r2 for the purpose of biasing then we have registers connected in for, uh, to the collector terminal and emitter terminal as far as these two are concerned they are participating in both they are participating in a dc biasing what is the dc biasing i repeat for uh, i just repeat right the dc biasing is keeping the transistor in a active region so the registers r1 r2 rc and r suffix e all these contribute into dc biasing as well as this rc and re they also contribute into the gain requirement that is the ec requirement so they contribute into that also right so this was your circuit vcc we have also seen the coupling elements called as coupling capacitor c1 c2 and the significance of those coupling capacitors we have seen uh yes with respect to this we have seen a particular graph 
characteristic graph this is gain versus frequency plot and this plot is going to have such a curve right this curve and we have given justifications for this why this curve here for the low frequency region for mid frequency we get the maximum gain 100% gain and for again high frequency we get we find a fall why uh, what all reasons for this we have discussed just to recollect the coupling capacitor what is the purpose of using coupling capacitor we already know this coupling capacitor also contributes for the low frequency and have a reduced gain and then we have the effect of parasitic capacitances the capacitances observed between line and ground or between the two node points of the device and they function or they show their presence at a higher level of frequency and we find this fall. So this fall is due to parasitic capacitances. That is what we have discussed yesterday. A few associated, uh, associated terms with this graph to be discussed for now. I think one more point, yesterday's class we supposed to discuss, yes. Now whatever circuit I have already on a board, it is emitter unbypassed uh, configuration. Now with this, as far as AC amplification is concerned, we are interested in a VC, which we call as a V out, and therefore V out should be maximum possible, or the larger one. With this particular, if I want to observe VCE, which can be defined as VC minus VE is V out. VC is this voltage, which can be defined with this and the drop at this point. So VC is going to be some non-zero value present at this particular point. We know the current orientations. Look at VE. VE is a voltage at this point with respect to ground. VEJ it is, which is a drop across RE. And with this current orientation, that drop is going to be positive. So if I assume that VC is a, say 10, and the drop created across this, let us assume it is one volt, then V out becomes nine, the possibility. If we add a capacitor, if we add a capacitor to this, what important to know here is the impedance at emitter with respect to ground also contributes into the AC gain, whatever gain we write. Into that gain, this impedance here is going to contribute. So earlier circuit, when we do not have this capacitance, the impedance here was only RE. But now the impedance, when we add this across, the impedance becomes RE parallel XE. And XE is a function of a frequency. So XE is going to decide the gain. So what would happen if we are working at a mid frequency, the larger frequency this side, what would happen? The XE offered here is going to be very, very small compared to RE. For example, if I am saying RE is 1 kilo ohms and this is, let us say, 50 ohms or 100 ohms, the effective value is 100 ohm. Or if I am going for a very good frequency, if I assume that it is a very, very low reactance and if I offer this by a short circuit, which is true only for the AC, because this is the path only for the AC signal, not for the DC, it's a capacitor here. So having this, you can understand that the voltage V suffix E is absolutely zero or very, very close to zero. In that case, what would happen to this expression? Vc is 10 minus V is equal to zero and V out therefore becomes 10. Or I would say compared to this, this is increased. And because the output voltage is getting increased, what we can say is uh, this particular configuration, uh, what we call is emitter bypassed, it is going to increase the uh, gain of the amplifier, AC gain of the amplifier. Right, I think <coughs> this is what we have not yester discussed yesterday in detail right uh, can we go ahead with few of the parameters associated with this I think yes we have yesterday discussed about input impedance what is the significance of having a larger input impedance that has been discussed right uh, gain also we have discussed the expression we already know 20 log of v naught upon vi yes. the next one very important is a bandwidth now what exactly you mean by a signal pass or signal amplified? So for this particular, yes, I just go for a generous block. So we have an amplifier, right? We got two lines, then the input lines, we got an output. Now we process different signals 
which are working at different frequencies and we are amplifying. Suppose I am saying the gain of the amplifier is 100. That means when we give 1 millivolt, we are expecting 100 millivolt. That is we call as an amplification. Oh, right. <clears throat> now, uh, whether we get whether we get this 100 gain, the gain of 100 for all possible frequencies or not, that we have seen. The gain fall we have seen here. So, theoretically speaking, or <clears throat> the general practice is, whenever we achieve a gain of 70% of the maximum gain, for instance, if I'm if we are giving 1 millivolt, we are expecting 100. But even if I'm, we are getting 70 millivolt, which is 70% of this, then also we can consider that as a signal amplification. But if we are getting anything lesser than this 70%, let us say 50 millivolt, then we do not call that as a signal amplification or a signal passing. Instead, we call that as an attenuation. Right. So our reference is 70%. So what exactly we do is we know the expected maximum gain of that 70% uh, we are expecting, we we find the reference for that. So this is 70% of G max, I would say. And this is a reference line. And then we extend this onto the plot. And then we have these two points where it cuts onto the frequency scale. So this is F1 and this is F2. What exactly we understand by these two? We call F1 as a lower cutoff frequency. We have F2, we call that as a higher cutoff frequency, and this F2 minus F1, the range of frequencies F2 minus F1, we call this as a bandwidth. We call this as a bandwidth. And what exactly you mean by that? The signal here having frequencies between F1 and F2, this particular range of frequency, will get faithfully amplified means what we can expect minimum 70% of the maximum gain for only for these frequency range not for below f1 or above f2 what we say is here there is a compromise there is a reduction drastic reduction in a gain for all the signals having frequency less than f1 and having frequency more than f2 and therefore we find a fall something like this and we understand the signal path is from F1 to F2 and this is what we call as a bandwidth. Right. Any more parameters which we have not discussed? Okay. Uh, efficiency is a term. The power efficiency is the term. So looking at this, when you know the circuit, AC coupled amplifier or other circuits we had drawn yesterday, we had a supply of a VCC, which is a DC power supply. So basically we are giving a DC power. So for a given DC power, how much AC power we can extract? That particular ratio defines or talks about the conversion efficiency or the power efficiency. And therefore it is P out upon PDC into 100. This is the efficiency term we define. This is very, very important in case of power amplifiers. Very importantly, PDC is an input DC power, P out is an AC output power and this ratio we call as a power efficiency. Uh, yes, there is one more term associated with this and that is a linearity. As far as the linearity is concerned, uh, all amplifier action basically is a linear action. What exactly you mean by that? If I write an expression, let us say V0 equals to 20 times Vi or I would write V0 equals to minus 20 times Vi. What is the common observation? Or I would write this in the follower circuit, V0 equals to Vi. What I can say is V0 is proportional to Vi. This is always, if output is proportional to input always, in that case we call the system as a linear system. For instance, if our input is going like this and we are expecting an output, a non-inverting amplifier, if I am going for this, we are expecting it like this, unlike uh, diode applications. So what is that you can see? Both are sinusoidal and the output is always the function of an input. It reaches to maximum, this also reaches to maximum or in this case it would reach to the negative maximum, not a problem. but. V0 is always decided by Vi instantaneous value. If this 
happens always then we call the system as a uh, linear system uh, as far as the amplifiers are concerned this particular part of the frequency for very high frequencies the system or the amplifiers compromise on linearity we got the effect of parasitic capacitances and then it compromises on uh, linearity behavior right anything else in this which is not been discussed right okay now we go for the next one now we go for the transistor to be used as a switch okay referring to the output characteristics if you want to recollect i had given you some details on to this this is vce and ic and i am again we are again discussing about the transistor so we have a transistor right we can have either maximum current point with a zero voltage or we can have maximum voltage point with a zero current so we go for some circuit and let us see how can we use the transistor as a switch we go for some resistance rc here we go for one more resistance rb and here we give vcc in this particular case we go for 5 volt and here we ground it and what exactly we do is here we process a square wave which is switching between 5 volt and zero or i would say 5 and minus 5 is also okay we go with this and generally rb is taken much larger compared to rc we already know this is high impedance path and the base current is going to be very very small now with this arrangement how the device is going to behave that is to be checked the potential at this point is very very close to zero because it has been grounded and our observation has to be on the base voltage with respect to emitter and base voltage with respect to collector voltage we already know when the device gets turned on uh, 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 right those two points we already know the saturation point and the cut off point so let us assume that we are applying this pipe so when pi is pi volt is applied at this point some base current a non zero value a larger value of a base current is going to flow here pi volt minus some drop but basically the base current is small some voltage is going to reach at this point whatever voltage reaching at this point i denote this as a vb the voltage here also should be pi volt minus ic rc but this drop and this drop is going to be different and we have a condition such a way that vb is greater than vc this is going to happen vb is greater than vc and vb is anyways greater than zero so this junction is forward bias this junction is also forward bias and this is the condition when we say the device is operating in a saturation region and that is uh, the switch on a condition and how can we understand that switch on is this terminal is on here this terminal is on and the current in this particular branch is going to be the maximum which can be defined as phi u divided by rc the resistance offered by this path is only rc so the maximum current flows i would say the collector current is phi u divided by rc and this point we locate here and we understand that the transistor is operating as a switch on condition and what all observations we do the observation is current reaches to maximum and the voltage across the device between collector and emitter this is the same node point now and therefore the voltage vce is equals to zero and this is what we in general can discuss if we have a source and we got a switch here to operate and we got a load to supply right we have a source we got a battery here right now as far as the switch is concerned or the parameters across the switch or through the switch is concerned when the switch is off the current in through the switch is a zero right and whatever voltage we apply if the switch is off the rated voltage would appear across this that is what 
Yes, now this is when the switch is off. What is the other condition? If the switch is on, if the switch is on condition, the maximum current is going to flow, current is going to be I max. The voltage across the switch now becomes zero because this is the potential difference we observe. The voltage, this, this node point and this node point is the same. If I call A and B, VA minus VB has to be zero because the same node point. VA minus VA, it is going to be zero. That is what we observe here. This is a switch on condition. We find maximum current and voltage across the switch to be a zero. And this point we <coughs> can already locate and we identify that as a saturation. So if we want this to be an operative point or near to this, we have to select such a base current decided by this. Okay, to analyze, you can apply the KVL for this loop. How can you apply the KVL for this loop? For you, minus IBRB, IBRB. This is a forward voltage drop, PN junction. The value for this drop has to be minus 0.7. This we have already learnt in case of uh, diodes, right? That should be equals to zero. So this loop equation you will will give you the value of IB, and IB is going to be significantly larger. RB you can assume some value larger than this, significantly larger than this. With this, you can find out IB and IB if it is resulting more than 50 micro. Uh, that is good enough to turn on the device. You can do this. The next one is if we are going for this, if your input is changing from 5 to 0. Yes, one more important parameter. If I want to measure the impedance of this or the resistance of this or when the switch is on, what is the resistance offered across the switch theoretically? It is going to be the resistance of this particular is going to be zero. There is no opposition offered and therefore we can understand that the resistance offered here is going to be zero. This is this switch is also on, this is also on and we can say that. The switch is on, the resistance offered across the switch is zero. Right. <coughs> now we go for a zero application. When we give a zero volt at this point, absolutely the current through this branch is going to be zero. So the base current is going to be zero or this potential also I would say is equals to zero. This is at a zero, cannot turn on this. For this junction to turn on, we want this potential to be larger than this, but now it is not and therefore this is turned off. Here also we have this to compare. We have some non-zero value at this particular point. So this is lesser, this is less positive compared to this and therefore this is also uh, turn off, so both the devices are turned off. Even for this, zero processing, even if we consider a drop, this may result into a negative if it at all draws some current, right. This will result into negative and this is going to be reverse biased, right. Because both are reverse biased, both are reverse biased, right what would happen here because both are reverse biased no current can flow through this so the current now is current now is zero or i would say practically the current is very very small now you should understand one important point though i have shown a cut here it is not an absolute cut the device is already there it is only in a reverse bias condition and there therefore there is going to be a very small current into this particular path the current is going to be something like 5 micro or around 10 micro amperes. So current, instead of saying zero, practically we find a very small current. The minority charge carries are there into this. So the current is going to be small. That is what we see. Next is the voltage at this point. What is the maximum voltage or the voltage at C? We are interested in VCE. which can be defined as VC minus VE. And VE, this voltage is already zero. And therefore VCE is equals to VC. What about VC? VC is phi u minus the drop across this. So, what is VC? Phi u minus ICRC is equals to VC. That is the expression for VC we can write. We already know that IC current is very, very small or we can neglect. If I consider this to be zero, VC is going to be phi and therefore VC is going to be phi u volt. So, what is happening now? When the switch is off, when the switch is off, whatever rated voltage is appearing across the switch, that is what we say. What kind of 
okay current is a zero what kind of resistance it offers if i see this this is an infinite resistance case practically the resistance is going to be very very high something like 500 kilo ohms or more than that is the resistance offered so the resistance offered here across the switch is going to be very very high so this is how the transistor can be used as a switch again who decides this turning on and turning off of the device it is the base layer whatever signal we give here if we are giving positive max 5 the device is turned on if we are giving 0 or a minus this is going to be reverse bias yes, uh, the uh, transistor is going to be operated as a switch off condition ok we referring to your notes if this I call as an input changing from 5 volt and this is the 0 volt line and if I want to draw yes <coughs> when we give a 5 volt how is the output when we give this the device is on condition and what is the output voltage the output voltage then expected is to be 0 so when this is rising the observation here has to be there has to be a fall from this to this so this I would say 5 and 0 it will remain at this right when we give a 0 the voltage whatever waveform I am drawing is for VCE this is going to rise to this voltage 5 volt yes if I want to draw the current changes they are going to be reverse the current here is going to be maximum I can show and then here it can be minimum okay now this switching the signal at the input uh, changing from 0 to 5 and at the same instant we have shown it changing from 5 to 0 but practically it takes a time it is not going to be this way or at this particular point it is not going to be a rise like a pulse it is going to take some time so there is going to be a delay uh, <coughs> as far as the switching operation is concerned right what next we can do yes there is one more application to be discussed and the operation is oscillator Okay, the next operation or the application oscillator. The objective here is to generate the signal. Whatever earlier application we discussed, there we had a small uh, EC signal which is to be amplified. The whenever we say signal, it could be current signal or the voltage signal. As far as this application is concerned, we our job is to generate the signal. The signal to be generated is going to be a sinusoidal signal or the square wave signal whatever discussions we do today are associated with the sinusoidal signal generation we can use transistor for this purpose also uh, right basically the oscillators are positive feedback system and there is a particular criteria called as a barkhausen Barkhausen criteria if we satisfy Barkhausen criteria we can generate the signal using transistor so to brief on that or to brief on a positive feedback system I just draw the block diagram so we have an amplifier required amplifier we can form using transistor and we should have an feedback element and the gain of that feedback element we indicate the beta the generally used uh, terms A and beta so A is gain of amplifier this is a forward system and it's a feedback system so this amplifier feeds to this right and this will feed back here so here we have a summing point and it gives to this this is a feedback and this we have an input line of course in case of oscillators we do not have an input signal but to understand the positive feedback system this is the block diagram so here we have an input signal here we have a feedback signal and this is supposed to be the output signal so at this particular point the signal is going to be v in plus v here if it is a positive feedback system so here we have a choice if i am writing it as a plus it is a positive feedback system and here we can have a negative feedback system also if we go for a minus 
now our interest is in a positive feedback system <coughs> if i want to observe the given system with a one unit system is going to be like this and the gain of this block this whole block right or including this if i am saying this block this is going to give me a gain of a upon 1 minus a times beta so if we have a plus here we get minus at this particular point if we have a minus here we can get plus at this point so this is again expression and this is to be referred for a positive feedback system and what would happen what is the observation which you can do on to this <coughs> a is amplifier gain b is a feedback uh, component gain beta this product is going to decide the gain value so all possibilities here a times beta can be positive or it can be zero if it, if, if it is a zero or sorry zero or it can be if it is a zero the gain is only a if a times beta is equals to 1 1 minus 1 so theoretically this will reach to infinite and that is going to be used in case of oscillator so as far as the barkusen criteria is concerned a times beta gain or the total uh, system feedback system uh, sorry main system forward system and the feedback system product has to be nearly equals to 1 if that happens in that case we can generate the oscillations or we can generate the sustained sinusoidal waveform right now to to form this we discuss the barkusen criteria again as far as amplifier is concerned we have already learnt an amplifier using a transistor and i go for that and then you can name this we already know this circuit r1 r2 voltage divider arrangement we have rc we have r suffix e and we give a supply vcc now this is my amp this is our amplifier here rc coupled amplifier we can have a coupling elements capacitor now we are ignoring them basically this is an amplifier here and this can offer a particular gain required gain depending upon the values of rc and re we can we can have okay uh very important is this is an common emitter configuration and for common emitter configuration we already know that this functions as an inverting amplifier and therefore if at all we have some input like this the output so with respect to input if i want to draw the output the output is going to have a phase inversion 180 degree phase inversion so we can have a defined gain and then we can have a phase inversion so phase shift is of a 180 degree that is what we have 180 degree phase shift now what we do is we go for this which is a feedback system before going to that i should mention very clearly about barkhausen criteria what is the criteria barkhausen criteria is is that the total gain or the the, the gain of this system should be 1 so a times beta should be 1 this is required what is the second requirement if i want to compare the signals here or the total phase shift the total phase shift has to be zero the total phase shift these are the two requirements has to be zero and accordingly we have to select this particular component now already i have said that if i want to compare these two signal the signal here and signal here they are having a phase shift of 180 we want a phase shift of total phase shift of a zero which can be obtained with this 180 we already have we can go for minus 180 or we can go for plus 180 360 is also a zero so we should arrange for another 180 degree phase shift which can be done using passive elements and you have already learned different passive elements like rc and rc combination in your first chapter you have learned this yes referring to this if i have a circuit like this capacitor and resistance and if i compare the signal at this point and this point i'll call this as a v1 or v2 and v1 <coughs> v1 minus drop across x is going to be v2 and when we draw the phasor diagram definitely v2 and v1 are not in a phase they are going to form a phase angle difference 
of our interest and accordingly we have to select the values of R and C. So because we need 180 degree phase shift, one combination is not enough, right? We can go for num uh, such different combinations, we can go for, if we go for a two, we have to, if I go for only two combinations, let us say one more like this. This has to create 90 degree phase shift and this has to create a 90 degree phase shift. Then we can go for 180, but it is not, uh, in that case, one of, uh, selection of capacitor register becomes very, very difficult. But exactly we do is we can go for one more combination and we expect this combination to give 60 degree, this combination to give 60 degree and this combination to give 60 degree, which will give in total a phase shift of 180 or we can go for one more fourth one and we can go for 45 45 45 and 45 that also becomes 180 but selection minimum we should have a three which allows us to select the values of register and capacitor to be finite right so this arrangement we do here and how exactly we do that so we are forming a feedback so this is the output line and from this we go for a feedback system so we go for a capacitance element and then we go for a resistance, whatever way it has been shown there. So we have a capacitor and then again we have a capacitor here. We extend, we will have a resistor and then we have this and then we join it here. Now you can observe one point. At this point we have a resistance connected to this node point with respect to ground. This I can consider at this point. So and this I name as a R. Right. This is also okay. We name this as a R. Now what is expected? This combination should produce a phase shift of 60, this of a phase shift 60, this of a phase shift 60 and therefore all these values should be same. So C, C, C are same and these R are going to be same. So this is going to be an oscillator. So we have an amplifier. We have a feedback system. In very importantly, we do not have an input. We do not have any input. What we have is only a DC supply. And out of this DC supply, at this node point, we should generate or attempt is to generate the sustained oscillation. When we say sustained oscillation, <coughs> the waveform we call should have the same magnitude for different cycles. So this height here should be same. Sustained oscillations to be generated. How exactly <coughs> this happens? Uh, when such arrangement is done at every node point, we, we would say there is a thermal noise or uh, there is a noise signal which is which can be observed in terms of a voltage signal. So whenever we energize, though it is a DC supply, the initial signal or that noise signal is going to have naturally a sinusoidal wave shape but very very small in the magnitude very very small in a magnitude but it is going to have a sinusoidal shape because we have amplification and we have a feedback system to satisfy the Barkosian criteria this particular is going to be converted into later on into the sustained oscillation which will have same magnitude and it will oscillate at the identified frequency it is not any other frequency or it is going to have the fixed frequency this is how we can generate the signal now coming back to Barthusen criteria, this is not only one requirement to satisfy. Okay, as far as zero phase shift is concerned, this is giving 180 degree phase shift because it is an inverting amplifier. And this particular whole combination is giving a phase shift of another 180. And that happens only at a specific frequency. For other frequency that doesn't happen, you can look at this. When we say RC combination, right, when we say RC combination, like this and we compare the voltage V2 and V1 we cannot blindly say that voltage at V2 and V1 has a phase difference of a 60 that would happen depending upon the value of Xe and Xe is a function of frequency it is a function of a frequency so at a particular frequency only this will produce a phase shift of 60 60 and 60 satisfying condition number one there's one more condition and what is the condition the A times beta has to be 1. Practically A times beta is going to be a bit more than 1, not exactly 1. But however, referring to Barthusen, when we say A times beta has to be 1, 
how much gain it supplies. We are talking about A times beta to be 1. Suppose I am saying this A is giving a gain of 29. 29. If A is giving a gain of 29, beta should be 1 upon 29. So what is the observation on this? When I want to compare this signal with this, it, it should be a compressed version. It should be an attenuation. Right, and what is the attenuation factor for this body? The attenuation factor for this bed is beta equals to 1 upon 29. So all those compressions are going to result here, you can see. This voltage is this voltage minus drop. So if I want to compare this voltage with this, this voltage is lesser than this. Again, this voltage is lesser than this, and this voltage is lesser than this. So if I want to overall compare this signal with this, this signal is an attenuated version of this. By how much it should attenuate? by this <coughs> beta value. So this is both helping for phase shift and also to attenuate the signal so that we satisfy the Barkosian criteria and the noise signal, initial noise signal uh, can be converted into a well-defined uh, sinusoidal signal. Both these cases, attenuation by a known factor, attenuation by a known factor as well as the phase shift of 180 by this happens at a particular frequency controlling the XE value. And therefore, this plays a very, very important role. We call this, whatever we have discussed so far, as RC phase shift. I would have named it at the beginning, RC phase shift oscillator. Why do we call it the RC phase shift? Because we are using a ladder network formed using R and C and they cause a phase shift uh, and therefore we name this as RC phase shift oscillator. We got to write an expression for a frequency and the frequency expression to generalize is 1 upon 2 pi square root 6 R into C and this R into C are decided by this, this resistance and this capacitance and we are directly writing the expression for the frequency. So whatever signal generate, gets generated will have a frequency defined by R and C component. Basically, RC uh, phase shift oscillators are used to generate the radio frequency signals, uh, kilohertz frequency range. We have other types of oscillators also, like Colpitt's tuned oscillators, Colpitt's oscillators, we have crystal oscillators also, and also we have, broadly to say, we have oscillators to generate the square wave waveforms. So as far as your syllabus is concerned, you should focus on this, uh, what all possibilities of asking you on this particular heading. You will be asked to explain about RC phase shift oscillator or what is the Barkosian criteria or about the positive feedback system. So those are all details you should able to write. So as far as the transistor is concerned, so far we have seen transistor as an amplifier, then we have seen <coughs> transistor as a switch and now we are observing transistor as an amplifier. Uh, in your notes, you will find the mention of PNP transistor also. The construction wise, the device is different. Uh, and, and then again, you should prepare onto that also a little bit. 